So it was, it was uh, the fall of 2007, and I'm in my doctorate. I remember where I was in school. I get this phone call, step into the hallway, and uh, my mom's on the other end of the phone. She's bawling. Mom, what's going on? Blake, it's your dad. It's hard to shut down. You know, I remember those moments so clear. Like I remember the pattern on the floor at that moment because it's not only when you lose your health, it's when a family member or anybody that you love loses your health. Like that's the thing. And so many of us are walking around like we're, we're stressed out and we have bad stuff going on in our lives when really it's nothing anywhere close to bad stuff. Like the day a family member loses their health, that's bad stuff. And you don't, you don't forget those. And I saw my dad go through something over the next two years that I want to prevent every single person that can possibly come across from going through, and that's the American healthcare system. Two years goes by, January 5th, 2008, loses his hearing, heart shutting down, doctors can't figure it out, it's not an artery, it's not the heart, they don't know what's going on. Inflammation's going crazy in his body. Two years in, they land on this condition called Kogan syndrome, which like eight people in America had, some just rare things. So he's got 15 different doctors, He's on 16, I think, different drugs, and he can't hear, he, his heart's still failing, he can't get out of bed, he can't work, he can't bike, fish. My family's just, the medical bills are piling up. From my best estimate, it's over $200,000 in medical bills at this point. And my dad's sicker than he's ever been. So here he is, is going through the best healthcare system in the world, supposedly, but his results just suck. And I gotta figure out what do I do? Like, how do I, how do we help him? And I just took the responsibility myself. I'm like, no one's coming for my dad. Like, no one's coming for you. Like, no one's gonna take responsibility for your health like you take for your health. It's just not gonna happen. No one's gonna care more about you than you. Um, where in that situation, my dad was helpless because he didn't have the knowledge. That's why people need leadership from someone like myself from the perspective of you need a doctor that's going to figure out the cause of your problems, not just treat the symptoms, and that's the American healthcare system. So dad on all those drugs, they, they flay him open, they saw it through his chest, they put a pig's valve in his heart, and then they, he loses his hearing, so they put cochlear implants in, which thank God he could like do some form of hearing, but he never heard like the real sound of this rain again. Like the real sound of his grandbaby's voice or my mom's voice, like he's gone. It's all synthesized electric. It was just nuts to go through. Like, I mean, you, have, you don't want to experience something like that, but I tell you what, it'll wake you up. And so I just started on a mission. How do I get my dad well? And I found an office just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And the first thing he checks is my dad's central nervous system. And no one had ever looked at that before. In the bottom of my dad's neck, he's got rotting spine, which is rotting the nerves. Those that go into the heart. It was electrically shorting out my dad's heart, and I knew it. And I started to do more and more and more and more research, and I realized the nervous system is something that no doctor was talking about. Yet, when I took my first anatomy class, I think it was in first or second quarter of becoming a doctor, the first thing we talked about on the first page was the spine and the central nervous system. And then in embryology is when you learn about the babies and how a baby is formed. You're literally like 10 to 14 days old in the womb when your nervous system, your neural tube forms. So it's just, it's just the foundation of life and yet no one's talking about it. And that's when my mind was just blown and I knew I was on top of something of just enormous magnitude of how many people actually needed to look at their nervous system first, just like my dad. So lo and behold, we start working on it. Two months later, we're changing his nutrition. We're cutting sugars out. We get him moving. I remember we're like, I'm taking him to the, to the track to do workouts. Uh, my wife was taking him in the morning to get care. I'm taking him in the afternoon to get care. We put our whole life aside and he lived with us. We bought his foods. We did everything we had to do to build health in order for him to get, to get health. We went to 15, 16 different doctors expecting health, but yet all they delivered was sick care with drugs and surgery. So we were doing the same thing over and over, looking for a different result. And do the same thing over and over, looking for a different result. That's the definition of insanity. There was no health found in that model. In fact, the uh, director of Mayo Clinic, where my dad was, said it, they asked him, like, how would you fix today's health care? And he goes, he goes, you can't fix something that doesn't exist. And when they asked him, they go, what do you mean? They, he goes, it's like going into a garage to fix your car and realizing you don't have a car. He goes, we don't have a healthcare system, we have a sick care system. The director of the place that's taking care of my dad is saying this. So we can't take him there. And so this doctor leads us through real healthcare. And I saw my dad in two months, he came off all 15 drugs. We took everything, he was off everything. 
uh, prednisone, Humira, methotrexate, nasty, nasty drugs, but that, that one's a cancer drug and not an aspirin, not a Tylenol. And I sent it back to my mom and my mom's like, she got her husband back. Like he was mowing again and they were going biking and they were going fishing and I saw it save his life. And then that's why I knew I'm like, what do you do? Like you have a responsibility when you know information like that to get it to every single person. And so every day I have to wake up with that responsibility, whether I feel like it that day or not, because there's days I don't feel like it. I don't feel like getting up and being Dr. Living Good and, and just left the office of talking to someone that's an 83 year old that's going through cancer or the, you know, the um, 60 year old lady that's got, you know, severe back issue again, or the, you know, the kid that has significant ADHD and is getting kicked out of school. Like some days I don't want to deal with those problems, but it's who else is going to lead them? Like they can't go um, to the hospital and get help. They can go there and get drugs, but at the end of the day, it's not going to fix them. It might prolong some kind of emergent situation, but so that's the drive. That's the focus every day that there's a responsibility. I saw what it did to my dad and then I just kept studying. And then it got to this point where it's now, you know, whatever, thousands and thousands of patients later work with the Olympic teams and books and speaking all over the place. Like I never would have thought or dreamt up that this is what I would be doing, but that's how life goes. You know, that's how you find your purpose is that you, you know, something that was so tragic and so bad for my family, uh, was used for so much good that my dad got so sick so that thousands of other people and maybe it's you know someone that even listen listen to this right now like it's they get well they get their they get their life back and so it's all used for good and so i just get up every day and use it for good the tragedy that i've had to face uh six years later uh, my dad the like the liver the um all the medications all the stuff he'd taken and, and all the damage that was created from the first 50 some years of his life when he didn't know how to build health caught up with him and we couldn't stop it. I flew him down and tried to undo it. And so here I'm in the midst of helping thousands of people and you can see lives change, people coming off drugs, reversing cancers, everything you can think of, every condition, like we've seen success with it. But you can't save the person closest to you. And we had to try to go back to that well again and it didn't work and uh, we knew it. And that was one of the hardest times in my life where I had to send my mom, my dad back to my mom. I couldn't save him. And he passed away at 58, never met uh, my son, never met my daughter, his grandbabies. And the day he left, I had to put him on my back and carry him to the car. And then he got to the airport and I had to wheel him in a wheelchair. So the, the, the man that carried me when I couldn't walk, um, at the beginning of my life, at the end of his life, I had to carry him and kiss my dad goodbye and watched him wheel the way. My wife was taking him back to Colorado where they lived and that was the last time I'd ever seen my dad. And I knew it. It's a crazy thing when you know it's the last time you're going to see somebody. But all it did is just added more to the fire. It just added more, like, like someone called it one time, compassionate. It's like you're compassionate and pissed off at the same time. And so I like, I, I'm just conditioned it most days if you can't feel it because I understand what's going on in the system right now of, of the politics of what's happening in healthcare. And we have a bunch of sick people. If we had a bunch of healthy people, I'm not having this conversation right now, but our results suck. And all we're doing is throwing a bunch more medications, more technology, and we're raising billions of dollars for the funding of finding research for diseases. And clearly that's not working because uh, we keep getting sicker, we keep getting more of it. So we got to get down to the root causes of what are our habits, what are our lifestyles, what are we doing to ourselves day in, day out that's creating this problem. That's what I'm interested in changing. And I can spend my whole life doing it. And I may not correct the whole thing, but I want to leave a better place for my kids so they have more opportunity to experience real health as opposed to just the sick care in the system that unfortunately my dad fell victim to. That's what drives it. That's what gives me compassion it every day. And, that's why I'm up. That's why it's going to be a good day. Because I know every time we deliver that, it's lives are going to change. Uh, we just see it over and over and over again. Now we got to figure out how do we scale it? How do we take something that's not scalable? It's a service. It's doctor care and get it to a country that's bleeding and, and dying literally for um, someone to come along and get an answer of it. And this thing is as big as renewable energy or what Apple did to the world with the computer or the biggest idea you can think of right now. Changing healthcare is that big. It's that big. It, it is. It is. If we can change this game, it's 17% of everything we do in the entire country of our gross domestic product. Like it's everything that we do. And if we can change this thing, if this idea of this, 
that's what gets me so excited. I'm like, we're, I'm, I get to be in an era where we have to figure this problem out or it's gonna sink our country. Like it's one of the most, most significant problems we're facing and it's killing all of our people so much earlier in the name of a lot of times corporate greed because we're not actually getting to the cause of issue. So it's like, if we can figure out how to scale this thing, like that's what I'm interested in doing. Um, let alone just one life at a time, saving them. And you know, if my dad had to suffer for that to happen, all right, you know, we're, we're gonna use it for good and he can just smile from, from up above.